Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back, or welcome to another Bangs Audio Review. Today, got the binary Dyna Quattro for you. Oh, man. Um, I just, I have to, like, control myself for the next 16 hours and 12 minutes. I think that's when the AliExpress Black Monday, Cy Cyber Monday, um, sale ends tonight. And I've got the the Shanling ME six ME six hundred sitting in my cart for like two oh five shipped. And I keep telling myself it's like that's like a hundred and fifty dollars off a regular retail price with tax and be a great investment for the channel and just, you know, all of the excuses I can possibly come up with to buy it. But I'm gonna try to be good. Because Lord knows I have enough stuff to do between now and the end of the year, really almost the end of January at this point, um, to keep uh good content coming in the channel, you know, going, um, pretty regularly. So, uh, I might, I might just have to pass this time. It'd be a smart idea. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> back to the set at hand. Um, almost the, the reason I'm, I'm like really kind of chopping at the bit for the ME 600 is that my buddy rogue, uh, gorilla, he's got it and he said he basically can't stop listening to it and he's got a lot of experience in you know that sort of price range IEMs um, more so than I do at this point I, I believe and just you know if he says something is that good well <clears throat> I kind of trust that um, but it's that good but <clears throat> okay ran uh, rambling over on that um, back to the Dyna Quattro um, this is a set that is um, on hand, and so I will be paying attention to it for the rest of the video, along with some comps. Um, and this set was sent to me by my buddy Sforcible, so thank you very much uh, for sending that, along with the Estrella and the Pi Audio PDM4. Um, I really appreciate you, man. You're keeping the, the content coming on the channel without me having to spend money, and that's, that's pretty huge. Because um, contrary to what a few people believe, I don't get all of these sets for free. A lot of them are paid for out of pocket. A few of them are loaners. And some of them, some, a few, come from companies like Signed Dance Audio, um, Artie, which is Soratune, uh, Dunu, and um, Meyer Audio have also sent me sets. So it's not like, you know, it, it, it's coming. There will be a point in time where I think I'll probably get the majority of my sets complimentary from IEM companies or sellers. That time has not happened yet. I'm working towards it. Um, it'd be great to get to the point when the cha where the channel is completely self-sustaining, um, and then eventually maybe profitable would be awesome too. So uh, that's that's the goal anyway. Um, for now, we're going to keep on trucking, and um, your all of your support is absolutely paramount to that happening <clears throat> in time. So I love you all, and I appreciate you all, and you know your engagement and your you know just awesomeness um makes this that much more fun to do um so anyway long intro binary dyna quattro here we go um this set is a four driver configuration three of which are powered one of which is passive so you've got a 10 millimeter dynamic um Eight millimeter, eight millimeter dynamic, a six point eight millimeter dynamic, and then a six millimeter passive diaphragm in the configuration. I will go ahead and bring up the specs courtesy of HeadFi, so we get those done and out of the way. Um, I'm not going to get in. You guys can read all of the explanation here f uh, for how they, you know, implemented them, but. <clears throat> Basically, you're looking at a three-way architecture, uh, second-order circuitry, and implementation of Clipple technology. So, there's a Google for you. Um, and it does come with a modular cable. Get into the accessories here shortly. Um, 23 ohms on the impedance sensitivity of 110 decibels. Don't let that fool you. This set is very hard to drive. In respect to IEMs, it's very hard to drive. In respect to some of my headphones, it's very hard to drive. So uh, you will need some some ample power behind it for it to really perform well. Um, frequency response, standard 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz. And as I mentioned, modular cable, three dynamic drivers, and a passive radiator. That being the smallest, the six millimeter um, is the passive. 
and boy it does something I'll, I'll tell you that for sure anyway the box is a pretty you know pretty nice tight package um, this was damaged prior to my friend receiving it so thankfully it didn't happen in transit to me or I didn't do it um, but luckily the box is substantial enough where there was no damage uh, to the contents which is really good um, the IM sat here on their uh, stock cable we'll get into the stock cable a little bit and preferences uh, comes with a couple sets of ear tips here packed up nicely in a little case and then down below you had uh, you have your um, basically like a pelican case it's seems to be fully waterproof shatterproof crush proof bomb proof um, yeah it's a, it's a pretty massive case got a nice little sort of foam feeling on the inside uh, there's your 3.5 termination should you want or need it and um, yeah a, an extremely substantial case like a step up from the Chopin case which I also felt was pretty substantial there's the other binary set which we'll be doing some comps with um, so yeah I, I like their cases you know they're not exactly pocket friendly but um, they're protective and uh, that's kind of the point right you're looking at a $260 IM here um, RRP uh, so I feel like the accessories are in line with that if the unboxing is a little bit underwhelming that's okay don't really care that much about it um, so yeah so there you go uh, onto the cable the cable I really do like um, it, it's not maybe you know it's not a Zins or an IVIPQ or you know even some of the nicer nice HCK cables but it is um, bouncy I, I think I really like that about it because it does keep it from tangling much sorry knocking those IMs around a little bit um, yeah bouncy ear hooks are not overly aggressive it's comfortable um, it has a you know chin slider that mostly stays put you know once there's tension on it it will stay in place Let's see if I can bring this back up a little bit there we go didn't want it shining on the screen for y'all um, yeah the cable is nice I, I like the bounce I do and it keeps it from getting tangled um, you know really at all there's another velcro cable management thing oh yeah might as well do this um, the modular system is nice because it's a screw-on a la like the newer Letchure sets um, so you know it's gonna stay put there is uh, you have to line up a sort of a little notch on it as well that's a little harder to do it's kind of hard to see but it's doable, you know. For me, I have to use my reading glasses to get it done, but that's okay. Yeah. And nice finishes on the cable as well. Um, yeah, the cable's in line with the price point, I, I would say. You don't need to cable swap unless you really, really want to. Um, my buddy also sent me uh, another cable to try with these, and I did, and um, it sonically, it did make a difference, actually which is uh, very interesting. Uh, if I can locate it here. Sorry about the mess, but you guys are used to it by now. Um, yeah, the Zins uh, HS70 uh, model. This is a sit down, uh, not a walk around cable. It's pretty massive. <laughs> it's, it's heavy um, and it's thick and it's, you know. But I will say this. Um, Insofar as treble and soundstage goes, I detected a uh, significant, maybe not significant, but a noticeable difference. Uh, opened opened up the set a bit um, in both the treble and the soundstage. Although I don't think it's a requirement um, to use this hefty of a cable, hefty like low impedance cable, um, which I believe that's the sort of the point of it. Um, but it is really, really nice. And it was cool to experience it because you know you don't often get to experience like sonic differences in cables mostly it's just aesthetics and comfort but this this actually did make a difference that being said perfectly happy with the stock cable on the build um the build is very similar in feel uh to the chopin so um if you know if you have that set and you know what it feels like it's that sort of same style of resin on the shell and then as far as the faceplate goes also feels very similar this could be a very lightweight aluminum I'm thinking um, and a really nice uh, you know 
you got the gears on there. The design's very nice. It's sort of, uh, I think it's showing like the different drivers, 10, 8, 6, 0.8, and 6, my guess. Um, nice that they did that. Nice touch, really, honestly, and very like attractive. If fairly masculine, but very very attractive looking um, shells and uh, and face plates on these. So build quality is definitely again in line with the price point. I have uh, I have no problems with the build. I think it's nice and comfortable. Um, these had no uh, no hot spots, no rubbing on my um, outer ear. Uh, so that was nice. It could be worn for very, very long periods of time, not just in the comfort, but also in the tuning, um, which we will get to now. So yeah, the um, the accessories are good, I would say. I'll give them a solid B plus on that. Um, insofar as the tuning goes, this is where I had a little bit, again, it was an adjustment period for me. Like it didn't hit me completely the right way right out the gate. Um, it is a sub-bass focus set, sub-bass over mid-bass, but the mid-bass is definitely present. Um, I think that passive radi radiator has something to do with the resonance of the mid-bass. It almost looks like there's a slight tuck here. Um, it certainly doesn't have the mid-bass of a set like the Chopin. Um, I can bring that graph up, I think, to show you what that looks like. Yeah, just just a little different there. Anyway, we'll bring that back up in a second. Um, but I felt like there was enough mid-bass. There's some, I guess, debate on whether this is a bass headset. To me, it is. Um, you know, I started listening to it. I'm like, yeah, bass headset for sure. Uh, I was like, I'd like the keys back to the bass head van, please. Can I have those keys back? Yeah, probably not. Uh, but anyway, it was the first thing I noticed on the set was the bass long before I graphed it and, you know, put it through the paces. I was like, wow, dang, there's a lot of bass. And then the second thing I noticed on it um, was the sort of darker tuning once you get past the ear gain. And I'll say this as I flip off my headlamp again so it's not blasting you guys. I'll say this. I, I, I found the set to be... This was the problem. <clears throat> it was the Hibby R3, or R6 III. Um, for whatever reason... The Dyna Quattro does not like the Hibby R63. It doesn't like the Sabre DAC chipset. It doesn't like the implementation. Um, it came off as being sort of very dark and fuzzy. And sometimes, you know, you have to get through the fuzz to get to the good stuff, <laughs> um, which which did happen. Uh, but once, you know, the reason I started here is because I was doing stuff. You know, I was like, I was actually in my son's room folding laundry and, you know, shit like that. So. Um, I had them up there and I was just like, wow, I'm like, mm. I'm like, I don't know, you know, I'm like, people really like this set a lot. Like some people it's like their favorite set currently and I'm not, I'm not getting that, you know, it was a little bit too, oh, I don't know, diffuse for me in the trouble. Um, but once I got back down here to the lab and put it through the, the FIO, the, the R2R and the regular K11 things cleared up quite a bit. And then I put the HS70 cable on it and things cleared up even more. So <clears throat> in addition to it taking some time to adjust, you know, and even though I was coming from the Estrella and the CVJ, like those sets have more brightness and energy to the treble than the Dyna Quattro does. So I think it was just partly an adjustment period. But once I got into it, once I got to start to know them and put them through the test tracks, I realized that the, the trouble isn't non-existent. It's just not a super, you know, serious areas of uh, area of focus. It's it's more of a complementary aspect to the set. Like it's it's this is going to be good for people who are trouble sensitive, for sure. Um, and that's not to say that it will be too dark for most people. I think only the people that are really, really serious treble heads, like really serious like air and sparkle fans, like you're not gonna get that in this set. Just like look at the graph. It's not there. It's just if it's not there, it's not there. Um but I do think that is slightly misleading because there was uh, a decent amount of sound stage, um, more than I was expecting, uh, from the set. 
uh, once I graphed it and I was like, oh wow, it sounds kind of more open than that's showing. Um, and also like, you know, the ear gain has got some fairly good energy too. So I feel like that keeps the set somewhat balanced. But if you if you're not a fan of bass, you won't be a fan of this set because it's it's strong suit where it really really shines is in both quantity and quality of the bass, including detail retrieval, including you know just um, really satisfying, not overbearing, not obviously not a lot of bleed going on, really none, um, but it's powerful and it hits you, and it's a you know it's a it's a it's T bass you know it's testicle bass um, all the way so and I think that's because it's more sub bass over mid bass so you can almost feel it resonating through your body um, it's pretty impressive and it's some of the best bass that I personally have ever heard honestly even though I could probably stand just a shade more on the mid bass yeah I think that would throw the set off tuning wise if they had amped that up because the sub bass is so strong um, strong and good right and the set maintains some balance too like if you if we look here I'll try to get a little closer um, on my graph oh yeah and I do have to mention that I had to turn the volume way up I don't think I've emphasized that quite enough guys this this set is not super sensitive there's only about a half a decibel difference between where the sub bass peaks out and where the ear gain peaks out at just above 3k so it's got good balance to it. It's just not a super bright, highly energetic, trebly kind of tuning. Um, but that being said, makes it great for long listening sessions. As long as you like bass, because it's got bass for days, you can listen to it like nonstop for hours. It's not going to fatigue you. And there still is enough detail retrieval. You know, it has enough technical uh, performance to it to. To not bore you or feel like it's just a one hit wonder or a one note wonder you know what i mean um so yeah there's a lot going for this set i mean it really like again it, i think that if you if you buy it and you like listen to it and you're not immediately like impressed if you're kind of like ah you got to give it some time um and i'm not saying break in time although it's probably already been broken in because it's a loner set like i said um it's more like just letting yourself adjust to the tuning. And once you do, once I did, I was like, wow, damn, this is a really freaking good set. Like, really good. Um, it just took me a minute, you know? Um, on that note, I will have to stress this. Sources are super important on this. Way more important than the cable, more important than the tips, although I did use the wideboard Divinus Velvet to open up a little bit more trouble on it, at least seem to um, it's the sources so the X-Duo TA-22 is out um, no no go no bueno no good um, it did okay on the i-fi I, I would say that still that burr brown chipset is too warm for it too much of a good thing um, it cranked on both Fios both the K11 and the K11 R2R uh, I have these both set this is already not oversampling unless you change it uh, but I did set the filter to non oversampling on the uh, regular K11 so that they're pretty much, you know, apples to apples there. And the Dyna Quattro loved those two sources a lot. Like, that was the best match. Um, high gain. High gain on both, guys. Gain boost on the iFi. This did not need a gain boost, and neither did the SMSL AO300. I did have to put it in a high gain on the DL200, and that was okay. That was kind of like same level as the, because uh, this is Saberdak and this is Cirrus, so it did like the Cirrus chipset better. Cirrus chipset, Cirrus chipset, Cirrus chipset. That's where these are going to shine the most because it does bring up that trouble enough to make it, you know, I, I would say more, more technically proficient. Like, it just sort of opens the setup. I like the Cirrus chips with it. Much more so than Burr Brown or Saberdak. That's just what I'm going to recommend, you know. And even, like, with the, um, right, Onyx Alpha 11T1, 
Dunu DTC. Great with those. Not so good with the um, TP30 or the Kiwi Ears Allegro. Um, I didn't test it with the BTR7 or the Q3, although I should have. And not friends with the Hibby R63 and that Sabre DAC setup. So there you go. Sears chips. Gotta go. Gotta go with the Sears chips. Anyway, that's my recommendation. Um, what does this all come down to? What does it all mean, right? Like, is it going to get a top 10 or a top 5 rating for the year? The jury is out. It's probably going to be top... All right, it's going to be in the top 10. It does get a highly recommended with the caveat of you got to be a fan of the bass and not be bothered by a little darker tuning. Okay, so if that's like your jam, then you're going to love this set because there's just a ton to love about it if that's the way you like things tuned. Um, it may cra crack the top five. I, I don't know. I'm still kind of putting that overall list together. Um, We'll see. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. I kind of like it a, as almost as much as I like the Estrella. I like some things about, sorry, the Estrella. Uh, I like some things about the Estrella better. I like some things about the Dynaquatro better. But we'll get into that when we get into the actual top ten lists for for the year, and for last year, and for all time, and all of those fun lists that I'll be putting together in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it a highly recommended. As long as you understand the tuning, and the tuning is up your alley. Um, the set cranked on metal, hip-hop, EDM, reggaeton, pop, rock. Yeah, it was kind of like that's K-pop. It, it was kind of like that's where the wheelhouse was for it. Metal sounded freaking phenomenal on it. I really, really, really enjoyed metal on it. It even picked up the uh, the, sh the the shimmering bells at 650 of um, Descending by Tool. Like, it even picked up that little sparkle shimmer thing that uh, Danny Carey does. Um, and that's very subtle. Uh, so for a set that is more darkly tuned as this is, to still be able to pick up that level of detail, that gives it a highly recommended. In fact, I think that's why I'm going to give it a highly recommended because it still does draw micro details out, even though it's not a super bright set. There you go. Very well done for my second binary set. As promised, I will do a couple of quick comps um, and that will run me out of time. So uh, as far as the Gazaudio Binary Acoustics Chopin goes, um, this is a much more bid-based focused set with more treble extension and energy. Um, I still love this set. I still think it's a great one. So if you want to experience something that's got a little bit more treble to it and is a little bit less expensive than the Dyna Quattro, but still has really nice mid bass, especially, there's your Chopin. On the more budget segment, I will again invoke the EW300. And if I could take this graph out really quick, uh, left channel to left channel, you can see the EW300 pretty darn close. So the little peak at like 11k there um, does give it a little bit more shine in the treble than the Dyna Quattro, but the Dyna Quattro overall a level up in sound quality. So, but for almost a quarter of the price or a third, you're looking pretty good there. And then the last one, which I think I still like maybe this, I, I think I like the Slevo SL41 Mark II better than the Dyna Quattro, just by a shade. Just because it has a little bit more mid-bass and a little bit more trouble to it. Um, I had the graph up of this at some point, but can't find it now. Um, this is going to be in the top 10 for the year for sure. May beat out the Dyna Quattro, we'll see. So those are some comps for you. Um, was there another one? No, I think that was it. I think that was the, the comps I wanted to... I just... I really like this set a lot. It's, it's just a shade short of love. And if it had just a little bit more 
of treble energy to balance it out just a little bit more, I think it would be one of my favorite sets. It's just not quite there. Not quite. Still gets a highly recommended, as I've said for the 18th time, if you love bass and you like a, dar a, a slightly darker tuning. It still performs really well. So yeah, there you go. Dyna Quattro. Um, if you're going to buy it, maybe today's the day because uh, those sales are going, going, gone. Um, I think you can get it for under 200 with coupons and coins. Um, I think I had it in my car for like 180 